Tonight, the Pepsid and Company is happy to welcome millions of new listeners throughout the Dominion of Canada. For the safety of your smile, use Pepsid and twice a day. See your dentist twice a year. Again this week, the Pepsid and Company presents another in a series of broadcasts to our men in the armed forces wherever they may be. Tonight, for the men of the Marine Air Base in Santa Barbara, California, the Pepsi and Show starring Bob Hope and his guest, Gary Cooper. This is Bob broadcasting from the Marine Air Corps Base of Santa Barbara Hope. <laughs> Telling all you Marines who took the Salamons to brush your teeth with Pepsodent, and your dentist will never have to take the hollow one. <laughs> well, here we are at Santa Barbara. That's an old Spanish phrase meaning let's get the furlough out of here. These boys here are all marine flyers, and a lot of these flyers are really young. I saw one today with a medal on his chest, and it was full of dents. I said, bullets? He said, no, still teething. <laughs> but they have to be real flyers, because torpedo bomber pilots always go in close to the target to make sure of getting a hit. I can't say how close, but they're the only ones who can sink an enemy ship and spit in the captain's eye at the same time. And nothing could stop these torpedo plane pilots. One veteran tried to sink a battleship and he missed. He got mad, bailed out, swam over and tipped the darn thing over. <laughs> I went out on New Year's Eve with a couple of Marines here, and even though every place was jammed, we had no trouble getting a table. You should have seen those Marines establish a beachhead at the ringside. <laughs> and these Marines were wonderful to me all evening. They were very friendly and unselfish, and then we met some girls. But they got me a girl that was really beautiful. She looks like she dropped right out of heaven and her parachute failed to open. <laughs> she was a real Santa Barbara, a real blue blood. She wasn't always a blue blood. It's just that during this liquor shortage, she goes around draining out fountain pens. But she was beautiful She had Hedy Lamar's eyes Paul had got his hair And Veronica Lake's teeth Trouble is She has to return him By Thursday <laughs> The boys told me She was a pinup girl Every time I looked At her pins I gave up <laughs> But most of these Santa Barbara girls Are hit parade conscious You kiss them Sunday Monday And you gotta support them Always <laughs> Sound like a bunch of losers here. <laughs> we went to a fine club, the El Paseo. That's the, uh... That's the name of one of the clubs in Santa Barbara Hill, El Paseo. That's Mexican for A-W-L. <laughs> and what a crowd. It was so crowded that twice I put silverware in someone else's pocket. The liquor shortage is really getting bad, though. I noticed one fellow sitting at a table next to mine who hiccuped three times and was immediately picked up on suspicion of hoarding. <laughs> this liquor shortage is really bad. Just to give you an idea how bad it is, I saw W.C. Fields walking down the street today, and he was walking. <laughs> and now... That's the fellas, now... Here's the man who really celebrated the New Year, Professor Colonna. Come on, Professor. Coming, coming. Little green men still following me. Tell me, 
<laughs> Professor, what did you do New Year's Eve? Well, Hope, this year I conducted myself very circumspectly and devoted the entire evening to the unequivocal contemplation of and satiation of my reflex motor ganglia and my intrinsically morphographical nature. What's that mean? That stinko. <laughs> but then you did imbibe a little, huh? Ah, uh, yes, I, uh, I had a few nips with a few pips. <laughs> you mean you took your girl out New Year's Eve? Yes, we had a lovely time. What a ball. <laughs> when the clock struck 12, she threw her arms around me, pressed her lips to mine, and didn't let go for three hours. She didn't let go for three hours? There must have been a passion in your embrace. No, glue in my mustache. <laughs> then, then we went to the Palladium and danced till the cows came home. Then I left my girl and danced with the cow. You dance with a cow. I suppose you and the cow did the rumba. Yes, you'd be surprised how much whipped cream you get that way. <laughs> Look, Professor, I'm ashamed of you. Is this the boy your mother brought up with such tender care and a good home? No, this is the boy she left on the steps of the reform school in an old sea bag. <laughs> Look, tell me the truth. What's the matter with you anyway? Well, I, I never told anybody this before, Hope, but you see, I was born three times. Colonna, that's ridiculous. How could you be born three times? Stork had me on a yo-yo. <laughs> well, Professor, would you care to peer into the mists of the future and make some predictions for 1944? Uh, yes, Hope. I am looking into the future. Hmm, what's this? I see President Roosevelt running again. You see President, Re President Roosevelt running? What for? Eleanor forgot her suitcase. <laughs> It's the film you feel on your teeth that makes your teeth look dull. Pepsodent toothpaste with irium removes that film, uncovers the natural brightness of your smile. You see, Pepsodent, and only Pepsodent, contains irium. It loosens film and floats it away, quickly, easily, safely. And when film is gone, Pepsodent toothpaste brings new brightness to your teeth. No wonder more people than ever before use Pepsodent toothpaste today. No wonder it's number one with the men in the service. Try Pepsodent toothpaste for just one week. See if your teeth don't feel cleaner, look brighter. See if it doesn't uncover that natural brilliance of your smile. You're in there tonight, boy. Get a tube of Pepsodent toothpaste and remember, Pepsodent and only Pepsodent tonight, contains irium. <laughs> Dear Miriam, dear Miriam, now she's heard of Irium, so the telephone ring is a busy thing. Hello. Hello. Some number. Oh. Hello. Hello. Some number. Oh. No oh. girls just be like Miriam, you see Bye, 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 baby. Where 
when I come back, we'll live a life of ease. Seems kind of tough now to say goodbye this way. But Papa's gotta be rough now so that he can be sweet to you another day. Bye, 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 baby. Now don't cry, baby. Shoo, 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 baby. Your pop was off to the seven seas. Seems kind of tough now to say goodbye this way. But Papa's gotta be rough now so that he can be sweet to you another day. Bye, 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 baby. Don't cry, baby. Shoo, 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 baby. Your papa's all to the seven seas. Bye bye. So long. Huh? We had something worked out there by Tony, didn't we? Did Tony work on that? Uh, that was Francis Lang for singing "Shoo Shoo Baby." Well, Francis, say, did you enjoy going to the Rose Bowl game with me Saturday? Oh yes, Bob. But the way we got in... <laughs> well, what the difference does it make? They were good seats, weren't they? I know, but getting one of the marine pilots here to take us up for a ride and then bailing out over the 50-yard line. <laughs> they sell tickets to the Rose Bowl game, you know. <laughs> yeah, isn't that silly? You know, at least this year... <laughs> at least this year we weren't so high up. I don't know, Bob. Before I could sit down, I had to brush the snow off my seat. That wasn't snow, Francis. That eagle sitting behind us had dandruff. <laughs> but just the same, those seats you got were a little too high up, Bob. You think so, huh? Well, when I sat down, a man with a long beard tapped me on the shoulder and said, Welcome, sister. Just sign here and the quartermaster will issue your white robe and harp. <laughs> Yeah, I noticed that guy. He just looked at me and pointed at the elevator. But the air... <laughs> but the air was invigorating out there, wasn't it, France? Did you see the way I told that big, tough Marine to get out of my seat? Yeah, she was a sergeant, too. <laughs> you Mr. Hulk! Well, Vera Vane... These are not sailors. These are Marines. You better not call them sailors or they'll to come right up here on the stage and grab you. Goodness, just look at all these handsome sailors. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm so excited about this wonderful Marine station, I just can't settle down. What's been <laughs> happening? Oh, Francis and I were just talking about the game. Yes, yeah, plentiful here, isn't it? <laughs> Mr. Hope. You know what nothing hug me and squeeze the very breath out of me. I suppose you told him to go slower. No, I inhale faster. <laughs> well, you sure didn't run out of breath at the Rose Bowl game. Uh, why? What makes you say that? Every time the referee blew his whistle, you whistled back. <laughs> I thought he was flirting with me. Don't be silly. It was a nice, clear day. Say, did you... Uh... <laughs> Tell me, do you have a nice, good, uh, do you have a good seat, Miss Vane? Uh, oh, yes, I was down at one end of the field right behind the goalpost. Behind the goalpost? Well, what's so good about that? Well, it was such a novelty seeing men run toward me. <laughs> did, you, did you notice how muddy the field was, Mr. Hope? 
One of the players slipped and skidded right in my lap. I was so mad. You were mad? Yes, the referee made me put him back in the game. <laughs> My boyfriend, Waldo's a great football player. He's in the backfield. Well, Miss Vague, there are different kind of backs. What position did Waldo play? No, he was full. I know, but what position did he play? <laughs> I really don't care. You can say anything you want about Waldo now, Mr. Hope. I'm through with him. It's 1944, and you know a new broom sweeps clean. Well, you ought to know. You've ridden plenty of them. <laughs> Card, Mr. <laughs> Why don't you mail yourself to the dead letter office? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but as I was saying, here it is leap year, and here I am ready to leap. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you think you'll get a man this year, Miss Vane? Oh, I sure do. Victory in 44. <laughs> you see, my motto is the same as the Allies. Yes, and you're spread out all over like the Allies. <laughs> oh, you dear boy. <laughs> you ought to comb your hair on your head differently. The point shows through. <laughs> If you really want to get married, I know someone who might be persuaded. Oh, Professor. Uh, oh, Professor. Yes? Yeah. Say, Professor, you know Miss Vague. What do you think of her? Uh, uh, yeah, if they'd only use sulfur powder sooner. <laughs> Hello, Miss Vague has something to say to you. Uh, yes, Professor, you know this is leap year. Uh, leap year? Uh, yes. What does that suggest to you? Frogs? <laughs> no. Kangaroos? Of course not. Salmon? No! How did I get into this thing, and how am I going to get out? Oh, well, Miss Vague wants to marry you. That's it. And, Professor, I'm going to propose to you myself. This is leap year, and I have a perfect right. I really have. I have a perfect right. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at, Kelowna? Wait till she gets a little closer. I got a beautiful left. <laughs> Ah, but really, really, Miss Vague, I can't resist you. You are so fetching. Oh, you really think I'm fetching? <laughs> yes, and if I had a stick, I'd prove it. <laughs> Listen here, shrub mug. Don't you feel a little drafty when you get so close to the ocean, or have you got that hole in your head plugged up? <laughs> oh, don't it. I can't get mad at you, Professor. Here, let me run my fingers through your mustache. All right, but don't disturb the field mice. <laughs> Kelowna, field mice and your mustache, why don't you get rid of them? I can't hope they're paid up for the end of the month. <laughs> oh, forget Mr. Hope, Professor. Wouldn't it be wonderful you and I married? Just picture it, the two of us living happily in a vine-covered cottage. And very soon, all day long, you'll hear little pattering noises on the floor. Egad, every place you go these days, crap games. <laughs> Pepsodent, and only Pepsodent, contains irium. And Pepsodent toothpaste with irium removes film that makes teeth look dull. It loosens film and floats it away, quickly, easily, safely. And when film is gone, Pepsodent toothpaste with irium brings new brilliance to your teeth, uncovers the natural brightness of your smile. So get a tube of Pepsodent toothpaste with irium. Remember... Pepsodent toothpaste, because only Pepsodent contains irium. Dear Miriam, dear Miriam, now she's heard of irium, so the telephone ring is a busy thing. Hello. Some number. Oh. Who's Hello. that? Some number. Oh. Well, so the girls just be like Miriam, use irium. Now, here's our surprise of the evening, one of the screen's most distinguished actors, a fellow whom the entertainment world is very proud of for his recent tour of the Southwest Pacific War Front, Mr. Gary Cooper. Thank you, boys. Thank you. Thank you, boys. 
Gary, I want to congratulate you on your great tour. Thanks, Bob. I'm glad to be back in one piece. <laughs> Don't tell me that's all one piece. <laughs> Say, are those your own shoulders, or did you put your coat on over a pursuit plane? What is that? Then? They're my own shoulders, and that better be your own nose. <laughs> Why? Well, there's a windsock missing around here. <laughs> Listen, Shorty, one more crack like that, and I'll reach up and pull down your socks. <laughs> you know, Bob, being so tall made it uncomfortable when I flew across on my trip. My feet got awful cold. They <laughs> did, huh? Well, didn't anybody else's feet get cold? No, theirs were inside the plane. <laughs> well, say, Gary, I, I hear you had lunch with General MacArthur. Yeah, I did, and he's a great general, that MacArthur. He sure knows his strategy. He knows his strategy. Did he tell you his plans during dinner? No, but uh, you should have seen the way he kept the butter down at his end of the table. <laughs> well, what did you and MacArthur discuss at dinner? Not much. He ain't the talkative kind. He left all the talking to me. <laughs> the conversation must have flowed like yesterday's tapioca. <laughs> You know, you're popular down in Australia, Bob. Well, I've never been there. Well, that's why you're popular. <laughs> Bend over and say that to my face. Gary, did you see any kangaroos down in Australia? Kangaroos? Yeah, you know, that's a pistol packing mama with a ball turret. <laughs> oh, you mean... You mean one of those animals that carries its brood in a snood. <laughs> Seriously, though, Gary, I know that wherever you went on your trip, you brought along lovely American sentiment. Yes, I did. Phyllis Brooks and Una Merkel were with me all through the tour. Say, I bet those girls made a big hit with the soldiers. No, Bob. When the boys saw Phyllis and Una, they just turned around and walked the other way. Well, how do you explain that? Well, they just figured that anything that looked that tempting had to be a booby trap. <laughs> a booby trap, huh? Yeah, that's something that explodes when you try to pick it up. Oh, I thought... I thought it was something new. <laughs> Hey, by the way, Gary, who is the soldier's favorite pinup girl? Betty Grable. Betty Grable? Don't the soldiers know that she's married to Harry James? Yeah, but they figure that after the war, they're going to kill all the buglers anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> Say, I understand you stopped at a Y. Did you see any hula hula girls? Hula hula, what's that? That's a swing shift in the grass skirt. <laughs> no, I wasn't interested in any of those hula hula girls. Bob, they're too shaky a proposition. <laughs> well, say, did you see any of these Marines down there in the Southwest Pacific? Yep, and I take my hat off to the Marines, Bob. Those boys always win. Why, did you see them fighting? Yeah, and I shot craps with them, too. <laughs> By the way, Bob, uh, some of the fellows down in New Guinea who hear your program gave me a present for you. Well, where is it? Well, I had to kill it. The rattle kept me awake all night. <laughs> Imagine giving me a rattle. <laughs> well, did you run into any of those wild natives down there? Yeah, I never saw anybody dressed so weirdly. Mm, have you seen Crosby lately? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Bob, I ran into some cannibals, too, and to amuse them, I showed them a picture of you. Well, what happened, Gary? Well, the chief looked at it and said, uh, very nice. If you guarantee them all to be this fat, I'll take four dozen. <laughs> This isn't fat, it's 100% solid flab. But tell me, what did you do to entertain the troops, Gary? Well, I told jokes, and they were good jokes. That's lucky for you, it's dangerous laying an egg from that height. <laughs> yeah, yes, Bob, I sort of, I was sort of an MC. First I came out and told the boys some jokes that Jack Benny gave me, and they all yelled for more. And then I told some jokes you gave me. What happened then? They just yelled. 
say, well, uh, what, what else did you do for the troop? Well, Bob, I sang a song. You sang a song? <laughs> Boy, you must have looked like a stretched out Sinatra. <laughs> What song did you sing, Gary? Well, it's a new song that's sweeping the South Pacific. I'd like to introduce it here before it gets around. Oh, swell. What's the name of it? Pistol Pack and Mama. <laughs> new, huh? They're starting to call it Pistol Pack and Grandma. <laughs> well, load up and fire away, Gary. <laughs> When I arranged to make this trip, am I on key? <laughs> My wife said, say that swell. She heard these girls were going with me and hollered, war is censored. Lay that pistol, say I'm off key. <laughs> wait just a second. Wait, wait till the band gets the key. <laughs> yeah, I got her, I got her. Lay that pistol down, babe, lay that pistol down. Pistol pack in mama, lay that pistol down. I lost some blood while I was there, but not to Hirohito's. I lost it mostly here and there and left plasma-filled mosquitoes. I love the trip, ain't got no blues and suffer no remorses. Those Aussies showed me kangaroos that looked like Crosby's horses. Lay them pouches down, babe. Lay them pouches down. Junior packing mamas. Lay them pouches down. They hit Rabul while I was there, the Marshals and the Gilberts. And if you think I wasn't scared, you're certainly off your filberts. Our plane soared over the open sea, the islands such as truck, while trailing five miles after me was my own dear stomach. <laughs> Let that airplane down, boys, now we've rocked and rolled. Set it down upon the ground before my bell gets tolled. <laughs> when this war is over, boys, I'll go back there to stay. Also, I'm the biggest liar in the good old USA. Lay that pistol down, babe. Lay that pistol down. Yeah, yeah, boy. Hey! Pistol back in mama. Lay that pistol down. Thanks for the memory. We're a little late. I just want to say our thanks to Colonel Burnett, Colonel Anderson, Major Foss, and Lieutenant Beck, and all the men here at the Marine Air Base at Santa Barbara. Not to be outdone by those Marine landings, our little Pepsin commandos landed tonight in Canada. Yes, sir, tonight we begin peddling our eggs over a 21-station network from Sherbrooke, Quebec, west to Calgary, Alberta, and north to Edmonton. That's a lot of Canada to cover, but it shows how far our sponsor will go to get a bottle of Canadian Club. Seriously, it's wonderful to have you Canadians with us as listeners, and Uncle Sam feels the same way about having you with us as fighting allies. Thanks from America for the great job you're doing up there. And Gary Cooper, thanks from America for the great job you did in the Southwest Pacific. Bob, I figure I was lucky to go. You know, show people are just about the only civilians who have the privilege of going to the front. And it is a privilege, Gary. I suppose you found the guys anxious to hear from home. I'll say they're anxious. Did I tell you about the uh, squadron of Marines? They were completely surrounded cut off from their battalion, no hope of escape, when suddenly the bugler blew the mail call. And what happened? They trampled 500 Japs to death getting to the letters. <laughs> yeah, it's mighty important for us to keep rushing that ink bottle. But, Gary, did you find the fellas down there pretty confident? Confident? Sure. But not overconfident like the civilian who says it's in the bag. Let the other dopes buy the war bonds. I said it was a privilege to go to the front. If every person could go there, he'd learn the casualty list are more vital than grocery lists. But gasoline burned in P-38 shopping for Axis planes is more vital than gas burned shopping for nylon holes. And he'd worry more about making guns and less about making money. You're on the beam there, Brother Cooper. Those fellows in the fighting racket know what it takes to win, and they know we've got what it takes. Food, gasoline, bigger production, blood plasma. Yes, sir, we've got what it takes, but no fooling, folks. Let's get more of it and send more of it to those guys. Thanks again, Gary Cooper, and so long, everybody. This broadcast does not constitute an endorsement since the Navy Department does not endorse any product. This broadcast came to you from Santa Barbara, California. This is the National Broadcasting Company. KFI Los Angeles.